have a lot of choice, but it's better to be limited. My first instruments were modular synthesizers because I realized that in order to learn synthesis and music production from a, the ground up, it was absolutely necessary to understand how modular synthesizers work. They are perfect for understanding signal flow and therefore understanding synthesis as a whole concept. And it helped me tremendously. I love my Electron off the track. It's very limited. I synthesize a lot of my, especially drum sounds, and namely kick drums inside Ableton, and I process them, and the recording of that, I take and put it into the machine, and then resequence it, reprocess it. And that sort of process of alchemization results in my sound. The first of these machines that I owned was the Analog Rhythm, so that taught me already the Electron workflow. But it wasn't until I got the OctaTrack that I really started to fall in love with these machines because, like I said, the OctaTrack is very limited. Like, at least in the way I use it, I use it as a sampler, purely as a sampler, and it forced me to make stuff that sounded good on the machine itself, so I don't even record like individual tracks or whatever, it had to come out good out of the machine. And I think that's a great process to limit yourself. We have a lot of choice and it's better to be limited. I have the Digitone, which is a FM synth, a frequency modulation. As for my sort of bleepy sounds, the ones that I, uh, I really love making, the sort of uh, spacey sounds, I use that a lot. But for anything else that's like chords and, and pads, I do use my polysynths because they sound great. I mean, you pay for the sound because they're also extremely limited. I mean, they're old machines that have been reissued, but they sound absolutely incredible. And I don't really need anything more than that. I can still sequence from Ableton um, the machines or I have my Circlon, but I mainly use Ableton, especially Max for Life sequencers to sequence these machines if I have to. For anything else, I will use my modular synth or the Syntact. Uh, it's fairly new in my collection, but it works. It has these chord modes, but so does this one. Actually, the Digitone has incredible chord sounds that you can like design, and it sounds beautiful, especially for a synth that costs like 600 euros or 700 euros, so it's really incredible. I have these two as well, this Avalon bassline and the Norand Mono, which are sort of like these mono bass lines. This one also can sound like a, a lead synth, so like also in the upper register and they're beautiful. Like this one, I used it for my live set and it sounded like fantastic. You can do these like dreamy, acid -y type of sounds and this one is like basically like a 303. My electron machines, or most of them, are connected by overbridge, connected by USB and yeah, it's synchronized and you get the audio directly and then everything that's analog, so these synthesizers, the modular and all that, they are running through my sound cards, which are hidden there in the back. My audio cards are the RME Fireface UCX, and I have two of them. They're connected via ADAT, so I get two times eight analog in, so I have 16 analog inputs. And then for the MIDI, it's all synchronized via the computer, essentially, like it's connected to the computer via either USB, I don't like even MIDI, yeah, I have connection on the sound cards via MIDI too, so they have these like uh, connectors through, through MIDI, and that's how like I have a pretty strong computer, and I adjust the latencies, and then everything is perfectly in sync. I record everything. I send the machines into Ableton, and I record the master output in Ableton, and I jam for long periods, let's say an hour, an hour and a half, or sometimes half an hour, it doesn't matter, and then I take what I recorded and cut pieces which are good, and that's how it, and then I master them myself and then play them the next day in the nightclub. My tracks are jammed and arranged live, and I know the process, like I've practiced it now for close to 10 years, so that's how I arrange. Obviously I'm limited in certain regard because I only have two hands, but, I like that.
Mixing for me is mostly adjusting the envelopes, pitch, velocities, and then you do a, a, a little bit of EQing and a little bit of like group compression and things like that. But on individual sounds, I'm not starting to do much uh, EQing and whatnot. The sound source has to be good enough. I use a little bit of um, Valhalla effects. Uh, they're good, but mostly Ableton stuff. Now Ableton 11 has great effects like hybrid reverb, and even the like original delay, it sounds good enough. Yeah, I do have plug-in alliance things or sound toys and things like that, but I still find myself using the Ableton delay, for example. Uh, I think it's a lovely tool that does its job. And <laughs> it's perfect, honestly. Like, and when I teach, I actually only use stuff from Ableton because that's how I want to show my students that you don't need other stuff in order to make good music. Tuning your drums is probably one of the most important things when you produce any kind of uh, drum-based music, because any sound that you add, whether it be a hi-hat or a tom or a snare, has tuning. And if those are not tuned correctly, it will just sound disjointed. It will not sound like one. Another thing that I think is extremely important is velocities. So the, the strength at which your sounds hit. And the most important is the length of the sound. So that how they run into each other. So if you factor in tuning velocities and envelopes, you can do a lot more than EQing or compression. A lot of people, like my students ask me, like, how do I compress this or how do I EQ it? It's like, leave that all aside, learn to make your drums in such a way that you do not need that. And then only you can do a little bit of EQing to correct some of the imbalances or resonances, but you can do most of the work with that. And for that, I only suggest that you learn how to listen. It sounds obvious, but you really need to just combine and listen. Like, let's say kick and sub. If you can't tell how, like what your frequency or sub is, pitch it one octave higher or two, and then you will know if it's in the right frequency. And that's how you need to learn. And if you really can't, then use a tuner. But I would say it's better for anyone to, because our job as a music producer is to listen. Uh, and then make choices based on what we hear.